Hello, Adam at Flash Building here, and today I'll be sharing with you some more Swift 3D workflow. Because Swift 3D is a great affordable tool for graphic designers who enjoy 3D modeling and animation without breaking the bank. Now for today's exercise, I've chosen shanky 98s logo, who's a member at developphp.com, and he's given me full permission to use his logo in this video as long as I give him the finished product of what I create the rendered 3D animation that will be an SWF file that he can then throw onto web pages or do whatever with. And I chose this logo because it has very distinct shaping and there's another shape set inside of the first shape so I thought this would be a really good one to use. Okay here we are back in Swift 3D. Now to get started we're gonna go into the extrusion editor and once in the extrusion editor I'm going to go to view background image and I'm gonna grab the image that I saved that is his logo the 2D version this is on my desktop somewhere here there it is I'm gonna bring it in you can see it sitting right there on my grid I'm gonna bring the opacity down just a little bit right about there looks good and we don't want the opacity up too high so we can see the lines that we're drawing out as we create them. Let's press OK and now we can start making our lines. Now I'm going to use the tangent point. Now whatever method you think is best and quickest for you, you can use the curve point, you can use corner points, but I'm just going to use tangent point for each point that I make as I go ahead and trace his logo out. So I'm going to start right here. I'm going to put a point right here. I'll put a point right about here, then I'll put a point right about there, then one right there, then one right here, then one right there, then one at the very tippy top, then one about midway on the left side, then one at the very bottom center, then one to close it all up. And while creating your points, they don't really have to be very precisely placed at first because at any time you can move them. So if you go to the pointer tool here, the shape tool, you'll see if I highlight this point and I use my arrow keys, I can move it around, put it anywhere I want. Okay? So if you didn't put a point in the perfect spot, don't worry about it. And all of these tangents can also be manipulated. So let's start right here at this point and what we'll do is move it's just like the pen tool that you're used to in Photoshop, Illustrator, or Fireworks, whatever Adobe software you work in or actually any software that has a pen tool so you just want to get all your curves just right manipulating the tangents the tangent points hey, you heard I said tangent okay so let's just keep manipulating these around as we go Let's get this one to curve in, come down a bit, and it's very easy. Nothing hard here. Yep. Let's move this down a little. Get that out of the way. Pull down so we can see the bottom real good. Get to that tangent point manipulation. Okay, right about there. Let's click on that one. For this to make a sharp edge, we're just going to pull the tangent in like that. You see? It's better than that. It's For this one we're going to curve it just a bit. Okay, so I'm going to continue going all the way around curving my points as I go to get the exact shape that I need sort of just like tracing it basically nothing difficult let's get that one nice and sharp let's get this one a little bit sharp on the edge so let's bring that up to where it meets that edge there excelente now all we have to do is get this one rounded and para bing para boom 
Now you can step back, take a look at what you've got now. And at any point, at any time, these points can be manipulated. So if we go into the scene editor, you'll see we have our shape there. There's a couple of points that I want to fix up. So I'm going to fine tune my points just a little bit in the extrusion editor. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now, on the bevels, I'm going to give it an outer rounded bevel. But I want to make sure it's not so puffed out like that. So I'm going to give this uh, 0 0.008. That looks pretty good to me. Smooth all the way up. Mesh quality all the way up. Now we can go into our preview and export. Actually, let's go ahead and slap a reflective material on it. Let's put that there. And the inside, let's also give it the same. Actually, I have too many lights here. Let's get rid of that one. By default, you'll just have those two lights. And on the bevel, I'm also going to give it the same color. Or maybe even a darker color on the bevel. Let's see how that looks. Now let's go to preview and export. Raster. Generate the selected frame. So you can see how that logo is really coming to life now. Let's go back into the scene editor and let's go to scale because I don't want it so thick and I'm sure Shanky wouldn't want it so thick either so let's go to the Z factor and press down on that arrow key and you'll see it in your left view pane and by the way you can look at it from the front the right the top whatever you want and you can also adjust these view panes once you're in it by holding the alt key you can drag that around using the left mouse button holding alt and holding alt using the right mouse button you can zoom in and out on it so now we have a little bit of a better shape there I think it's not so thick so let's go to preview and export raster generate selected frame okay it's looking good so far and you can still manipulate these things in the extrusion editor if you want to get this point a little sharper I'm gonna take that bevel down just a little bit maybe 0, 0, point zero zero five. preview and export generate selected frame that's great and I'm even gonna put that darker color on the bevel preview and export. Let's check it out. Better nice. Oh, not on the bevel. I meant on the inner edge. You can use this view pane if you need to. Just slap stuff on it like that. So if you can't really see the edge that you want to apply material on, then you can use a different view. So you want to get at it from the right or the top. You can do that. Now you'll see that Shanky's logo has that inner shape that kinda greenish gold inner shape there so all we have to do for that is deselect the item go back to the extrusion editor bring in that model or that image once again so we can trace the inner shape this time and we're going to be using the same technique Press OK. Now let's just grab our tool for our tangent point here. Point there, put a point there, put a point there, and then a point there. I'm going to do the same thing and manipulate those points. OK, so I've manipulated those points. Now if we go into the scene editor, you'll see we have another object where it should be right with that other object and this one is let's go to the scale this one is the Z factor 0.15 so now let's make this one 0.17 and now you'll see that it shows on both sides it should show on both sides let's look at the back yep 
so it's showing through on both so now let's go to the reflective materials once again and let's get that color and if you can't find the exact color in the materials here you can click on the item in the view pane go to material and put any color that you need to so we'll just leave it like it is and let's go to preview and export check out what we have generate selected frames aha so you can see it's coming to life okay now let's highlight both items you can highlight one and then hold shift and grab the other one and they'll both be selected or you can just press control a in that scene in the view pane and it'll select everything now let's go to arrange group now with this being a group of those two items now let's go to animations and let's just give it a regular horizontal spin you can check out all the spins you get there but I'm just going to use a regular horizontal spin press play oh that's very beautiful I'm gonna go to let's go back to frame one and I'm gonna select animate and I'm going to take this and drag it out to maybe 30 frames just so it's a smoother animation and a little bit slower actually I'm gonna go a few more frames maybe out to 36 or something like that click animate again to toggle the animation mode off now let's go to preview and export raster generate all frames okay so once all the frames are rendered in you press play and you can see what it's actually gonna look like that's smooth as butter baby doesn't get any easier or cooler than that now uh, you can go to target file type any target file type you want let's go to flash player SWF adjust the quality of the bitmap compression you can leave it how it is by default and it'll look okay I'm gonna put mine all the way up I'm gonna export all frames to my desktop let's call it shanky SWF save let's minimize this now I'm gonna open flash I'm gonna go to create new flash action script 3 file or action script 2 file whatever you prefer working in and I'm going to file import to library that SWF so flash is now loading that into the library so let me go open the library and you can see all the bitmaps that make up that animation let's drag the full movie clip you see I scroll down in my library to the full movie clip and now let's press control enter and there you have it you can even make the scene black if you want let's go to the background make it black let's give this thing a glow effect let's go to filter add glow whatever color you want let's grab that goldish color that he has there bring the strength up on it let's make it medium give it more of a blur whatever you want to do so there you have it okay so I hope you've enjoyed this little lesson in Swift 3D on how to make custom things using the extrusion editor to get just the logo shapes and design shapes that you need and we'll see you next time